This is my second film, so very excited. Yeah, such a great team, like great director. So yeah, this is my dream. Well, it's always fun, you know. We, he makes make, make movies a lot of fun. Every, the whole experience of going to work is, you know, is part of what you're doing, and you really just jump into it as a group, and it really makes it sort of a schoolhouse of, of movie makers. It's really, it's really a pleasure. It's unusual. It's called A Lot of Dogs, and there are a lot of dogs in it, but not real dogs, but they feel real. And I play one of the dogs. My dog is King. And it's a fabulous, wonderful, interesting, exciting, and lovable story about what happens when a lot of dogs get kicked out of a place and they get sent away to be in a kind of a prison camp for dogs. And uh, it's an adventure. And it's meaningful, funny, heartwarming, and I think it's gorgeously beautiful. It's uh, stop motion animation in, in a way that you've never seen before. It's really special. And the movies, when you see a West movie, you're really seeing Wes. I mean, there are a lot of different sides to him, but all of them are kind and smart and just so, he's so interested in, well, in all the things that I'm interested in, so that probably, that's probably part of it. I would want the audience, first of all, to relish a beautiful, unique experience. It's exciting, it's funny, but really what they can take away is it's got a huge heart, this movie. It's all about love and acceptance without being modeling about it or pushy. It's, it's just really a beautiful way to look at things. It even has a happy ending, but a hard one happy ending. And it's, it's, it's actually leaves you kind of encouraged, which is very hard these days to feel, I think. I was just uh, grateful to be able to work with Wes again. It's been, uh, we, uh, we worked at the Sundance Film Institute about mm, 25, 30 years ago. When you, when you make a, an animated film, you do your part, your little sliver. So I, I had no idea that it, was, that it was as massive as it is, and the themes were as broad and great. So I was uh, very ple pleased to see the finished product. Wes is a perfectionist. He's, uh, uh, I, I, I relate to it. He, he wants what he wants, and he's going to take the time he needs to take in order to get it. So we all know that, and we all were patient and and wanted him to, to get uh, make sure his vision was put out there. Yeah, I'll tell you about the casting call that Wes had. It was very unusual. Uh, all the cast members were assembled in a room, and uh, he had these different flavored bones, dog bones. He threw them on the floor, and he said, I want each one of you to pick up one with your mouth. And he cast each part according to the actor's bite. Oh, Wes is just a, a great guy and so talented. I know him for years when he first started. He's having a great career. He's an important filmmaker and now an important dad. So this child goes across the island to find his dog and then meets these five alpha dogs, our main gang, and they go looking on a rescue operation, essentially, for his dog. Typically in an animated movie, the actors have never met each other before, because they all record their parts separately. But Wes really goes through great lengths to make everybody um, work together at the same time and have it be like a, an environment and a creative environment. So this is much more of a reunion than a, than a typical uh, Hello, I've never met this actor, but I'm, I play their husband in the movie, sort of thing. It's, a, it's really great. To be able to work with Wes is, um, to me, like, I'm the most thankful for that. And he's also, you know, he's my, um, like, my best friend. I'm honored to work beside him, and I'm honored that he included me in trying to figure out what this movie was. Because he, he just, you know, it started with a gut feeling about uh, dogs in Japan and uh, this trash island and trying to figure out what that movie was um, to participate in that um, archaeological dig was pretty fun. So I'm just glad to be, I'm glad to be here. You should pay attention to the people that love you. That's what I think. 
It's a, a brilliant offering from the genius Wes Anderson. It's in stop motion, you know, like some things you may have seen. It's about a boy, a heroic and brave boy who risks everything in order to locate his dog. And all may be right in the world because really love is supreme and the, the love of a dog and the devotion of a dog, and especially the connection between a dog and a boy, is supreme and becomes the model for the connection between us all. Something like that. What do you think of that? I play a character called Duke. I'm a dog that's been banished. I once had a home and a, and a master family. And, but now we're just trying to survive. I was a kind of an alpha dog, but me and other alpha dogs, Ed Norton and, and uh, Brian Cranston, Bob Alaban and Bill Murray, we band together and we find this boy. And because we understand his, what he wants to do, we become, we fight with every last breath in our bodies to help him accomplish that and bring the dog and boy back together. And then through it, good things happen, you know. Wes is a genius, of course, and uh, it's great. He's as delightful, giving, generous, down-to-earth, sweet, unpretentious, original, uh, brave, artistic a fellow as has ever existed, and he's outdone himself with this. He keeps working out of love and personal vision, and he's an actor's director, and the way he directs you is fun and delicious, and he makes me laugh, and and uh, and it has good ideas that I trust completely. You know. Well, come on, I'll just name these names, Bill Murray and Ed Norton and Brian Cranston and Liev Schreiber and Bob Alaban. You'll see him tonight. Miss Tilda Swinton, uh, a, a great treasure. Um, Scarlett Johansson is in it. I've known her since she was young. I admire her very, very much. Frances McDormand is in it. Greta Gerwig is in it. Yoko Ono is in it. F. Murray Abraham, who once played my father in something, is in it. You know, working with Wes, I've worked with him for about 13 years now, and he's just the most creative, imaginative, imaginative guy out there. He really has uh, these movies in his head, and you just have to kind of figure out a way to get them out and, and to help him get what he what he wants. And it's, it's always fun because he doesn't compromise. He pushes himself. He pushes all of us. He's kind of like a coach of a sports team that's going to win the championship. He's got that kind of motivation level. And, you know, it's always hard, but it's always rewarding. Atari, um, I would say he's very determined um, and very generous. He really wants to find his dog spots. And in the movie, Rex says no owner has made an effort to do that. It's true. Like, I don't think any owner in real life would make an effort to do that. And he, he's very kind and very determined to do that. Um, I did the recording here in New York, and he, he's very kind. He, um, he gave me advice, which was very nice. He was very relaxed. And all my lines are in Japanese. And when we were doing the recording, he gave me advice saying, like, say things angry or sad or happy and to do that because he doesn't speak Japanese it's just amazing that he can do that it's for families it's for kids it's for adults it's for everybody I think everybody should see it it's, it's pretty much relationship between a little boy and dog and uh, something like a kids can enjoy and also adult can enjoy it's a simple really lovable story with a crazy background and a visual. I'm a mayor Kobayashi in the movie. It's one of the, the main bad guy. But in the end, he isn't that bad, I hope. You know, he still have a good heart. You know, I, I've known Wes for so long, so I know how he relates to actors and he become a kind of family. Like each actor knows each other, we can go out have a dinner so I wanted to create something like that also matching the actual age to the role so I gather pretty good in a group of actors like who knows each other's and so when we do promotion in Japan we can just go out together and have fun Atari Kobayashi the mayor's ward is his bodyguard dog named Spots 
and I play spots. And uh, it's all about how these dogs get to the bottom of this uh, scandal and reveal the anti-dogist behavior that the Kobayashis have been uh, inflicting on their prefecture. Spots is a bodyguard dog, so he's highly trained. He has explosive teeth that he can spit at you. Uh, he has a hearing device where he can understand whatever language you're speaking and he can speak to you. Uh, he's a pretty exceptional dog. I've, I've wanted to work with Wes for years. I just, um, he's got such an extraordinary imagination and such a great spirit as a person. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled he asked me to do this and I'm even more thrilled that the movie is as great as it is. I think that's just Wes's ensemble. That's like, these are the people who've had the, the great good fortune of getting to work with him and they've developed something together and so he continues to invite those same people back to the party. It was a daunting prospect. We built, in the end, 250 different sets for the film uh, because, as our cinematographer Tristan Oliver was wont to say, we're not so much building sets as building shots. Um, it was a pretty amazing uh, process of, of designing sets around uh, an individual framing and also to, to work with someone like Wes who has this amazing sense of composition, framing, and pacing uh, was just stunning. Um, he had some pretty clear ideas about the direction he wanted to take with the design, uh, primarily drawing a lot from uh, 19th century Japanese prints and screens uh, from the Edo period, Hokusai, and, uh, but also to take those beautiful pastoral compositions and translate them into trash um, was, was really an exciting uh, process and it, we got to explore uh, some amazing color combinations. <laughs> He constantly surprised you. You might think that there's a way to design a Wes Anderson film, but once you think you've got him figured out, he's going to surprise you with something that was completely unpredictable. And then when you see it cut into the film, you realize how well it all fits into his, you know, his vision and his style.